by your, by your own will. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit that will lead and guide you into all truth because you don't naturally just flow and do the things of the Lord. So if there's a will in you to do right, it's the Spirit of God, period. No good thing dwelleth in my flesh, the Bible says. No good thing dwelleth in my flesh. If somebody is not saved and they do good things, that's a seed of righteousness. Has not manifested yet, has not flourished, but it's a seed of righteousness in them. For them to love their kids, but shoot people off, but they love their kids, that love is a seed of God. Because God is love. They're not saved yet, they haven't confessed it, but they have a seed in them. Are y'all hearing me? You can't do nothing good. Anything good is of the spirit. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus got almost, it sounded like he got offended one time. Well, why are you calling me good? There's only one good. And that's the Father. You understand what I'm saying? So nothing good can be done in the flesh. So anything God tells you to do, first of all, you understand that it's not your natural will to do it, no matter how much of a good person you are. And secondly, understand that he's also saying you need me to do it. This is where Moses messed up at. Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. I can't do it. I stutter. Right. You need me. I will go with you. I will put the words in your mouth. Jeremiah, prophesy, I'm a kid. Right, you need me. I'm not saying go without me. You need me. You need my spirit. Any instruction of the word of God. What's the first thing you need to remember? You need God. You need God. No, that's the second thing. What's the first thing? It's not in your will to do it's it. It's not in your natural will. It's not in your makeup just to do the things of God. That's what you got to understand. That's why seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because it's not your instinct. It's not your instinct. It's not your first reaction. I don't care how saved you are, and if you just uh, you just wiping the tears from praying just now, you just worship it. Huh? Your first reaction is not that of the spirit. It's not. It's not in us. Okay. With that, I say this. Romans 15. It says, verse 1. Are y'all there? It says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Not to please ourselves. We have a serious issue with pleasing ourselves. This ministry, this choir particularly, has a serious issue with pleasing ourselves. We're going to come against that. It's a seed of pride. It's a seed of, 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 of stubbornness. Self-gratification. All right? You don't bear the infirmities of your brother and sister. You don't even you don't even really think about that. Verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor. This is an instruction. This is saying, okay, there's your job. Please Lionel. Aaron, you please Bones. Bones, please Paris. Like what? Make them happy. Make them please. Make them comfortable. Not you. A servant's heart is so banging. A servant's heart gets happy when you leave their presence happy. A servant's heart, Stephanie, Stephanie has a servant's heart. She loves doing people's hair because when they leave, they feel better about themselves. They don't leave like, girl, thank you, you look good. They don't compliment her. But she gets pleasure out of giving you pleasure. That's a servant's heart. That's a servant's heart. I got nothing out of it, but you got everything, and that made me happy. Mm. This is a strong word. I got to come against in this choir. Yes, Lord. For real. I'm serious. Okay? Let everyone please his neighbor for his good, for his good to edification. Edify him. Strengthen him. Strengthen somebody else. He ain't got nothing to do with you. All right? For even Christ pleased not himself. For even Christ pleased not himself. For even Christ pleased not himself. Jesus didn't come here and please himself. He, wasn't, he was in heaven already. He was at the right hand of God. He did not have to come here. So his whole ex purpose of existence was not to please himself. Okay? He, how many of y'all want to be like Jesus? Now let me see. Now do you really want to be like Jesus? Don't please yourself. But as it's written, the reproaches, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. All of your reproaches, all of your accusers, whatever, it all fell on me. Let's go to uh, John 13. We do not understand how to receive, man. 
We don't understand how to receive. You can only receive by what? Giving. By what? Giving. By what? Giving. You're right. Just say it loud. Giving. 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 All four of you got it right. Giving. You can only receive by giving. Also, when a man sow it, that shall he also reap. John chapter 13, everybody. A wife is like, uh, this is not all she's there for, but just check it out. <clears throat> she's a help me. So understand, every husband needs to understand that you need help. Okay? You have to understand you need help. If you marry, I, I don't let you sit down and you just watch my this. Okay, don't get married. Just don't get married. You have to understand you need help. Okay? That's why a woman was created, not to give you sexual pleasure, to help you. All right? A prideful man should never get married.